The YouTube team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraving with another video and sit down because I got a feeling that this one is going to go on for a long time because we got a lot to talk about. So uh, we just finished watching the Baltimore Ravens end of season presser with Eric DaCosta and John Harbaugh. It's funny, right after the presser, one of my guys hit me up. He said, was, was that the Liars luncheon? And I said, no, that's not till right before the draft. And he said, because I heard just I heard so many great things. From Eric DaCosta, from John Harbaugh, and we did. We certainly did. Obviously, one of the biggest things being about Lamar Jackson. John Harbaugh and Eric DaCosta continue to express so much confidence and faith that Lamar Jackson will be the Baltimore Ravens starting quarterback. They even said they even got a 200% chance that he will be their starting quarterback come next season. Uh, and they was asked about the franchise tag, the different kinds of tags that it could be. He said, hopefully they ain't even got to think about that. Hopefully they get a long-term deal done. Um, but he did express a lot of confidence. John Harbaugh talked about how they need to, they're going to build up the wide receiver room and all that. And I said, oh, okay. And they, they, talk, they talked about some more stuff too. And we're going to get into it in a little bit. But before we get into it, hey, talking about it is great. Saying, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do that, 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 that. That's amazing. And I love it. But actions speak so much louder than any words ever could. So as we dive into what this presser was, please remember, and even this goes beyond the presser, actions speak louder than words. We've heard a lot of stuff from this team before. We've heard a lot of stuff from Harbaugh. We've heard a lot of stuff from DeCosta. We've heard a lot of stuff from this team before. But how will their actions follow their words? That's what I'm waiting on. That's, that's what I really, really want to see. Uh, so let's just get into it. Anyway, uh, Harbs, he, he came on smiling. Him and Eric DaCosta, they, they were talking about Coke. They were like, trying to get a little sponsorship from Coke. Um, and he talked about every ending has a beginning and all. You know how it goes. The, where the 2022 season ended and the 2023 season begins. Uh, and he said that, Harbaugh speaking, by the way, he said, I feel great excitement and a great hope for what we're heading into. We're on a curve uh, on building this football team. And we have been for three years. Uh, you can see it coming together. It's becoming apparent where we're going. It's really not. It's not becoming apparent where you're going. It's, a, it's, it's been apparent where you've been at, but where you're going, we don't know the direction because you have no offensive coordinator. Now, while there was a step in the right direction with them letting go or Greg Roman stepping away or stepping down as Ravens offensive coordinator, so much is riding on what this next move is. And, hey, I, I wish I would have gotten the reporters' names who asked some of the different questions, but there were some really, really good questions that came out of this. But let's, let's keep going because we got a while to go. Uh, he, uh, this question was asked to EDC. Well, EDC, stepped, he, he wasn't even asked a question. He first said this. He said it was a disappointing end to a long season with a lot of different challenges. Excited about the potential of the offseason. That's my favorite time of the year. And, of course, he's a GM. Like, they love doing the free agency stuff, the drafts, the trades, the cuts, the – and all that stuff But anyway I uh, said we're excited To start negotiations With Lamar We're excited about the roster We're on the right path Okay now we're gonna see Now um, first question was What's your confidence level On getting a long term deal Done with Lamar uh, EDC said it takes two to tango We've spoken throughout the season Multiple times uh, Then he started bringing up Different contracts He said Stanley's contract Took a year and a half I <laughs> said so, whoa Okay Ronnie Ronnie was like Hey y'all ain't messing around with me Y'all gonna get this right uh, then he said, Mark Andrews, his deal took three to four days. Mark Andrews was like, all right, show me the paperwork. I'm signing right away. Uh, and then Roquan's took about a month. And he said, we'll communicate effectively uh, and as fair as we can be. Now, uh, this next question is where it kept getting good. He said, you both said that you want Lamar at the center of this team for years to come. Is that still true? Uh, and, and for some of the questions, because I was listening and writing at the same time, they some of them aren't exactly what the reporters asked, but they are pretty much ex exactly what the reporter asked. The, the wording may be a little bit different, but anyway. Uh, so Harb said 100%. Lamar Jackson is an incredible competitor. All he wants to do is win at everything that he does. That's the kind of guys we want to build this team around. I love Lamar. Eric loves Lamar. And he said, I, I'm Harbaugh, Harbaugh said, I'm like the fans. I don't know the details, but I have my fingers and toes crossed that it gets done. And he talked about how everybody from Bashadi, EDC, and just really everybody wants Lamar here for years to come. Okay, and then, um, th then it got even better because this is such a great question. And I know this question, when I know, because I, I, I've gotten a lot of messages, and, and trust me, anybody who sent me a message, a DM, or anything, 
I will get back to you soon, but my messages are incredibly backed up. But anyway, um, this question right here and the answer to it, it got a lot of Ravens fans hyped because they were like, oh, man, if Lamar is able to do that, then that means he's staying for sure, right? It's got to mean it. Yeah, he's going to be here for sure. And, hey, I hope so, but it does not necessarily mean that. But let's get to the question. He said, did you ask Lamar about the offensive coordinator? Harb said, of course. Greg and I spent hours talking about this for the last couple of days. When you spend four years together, you become really close. This is an opportunity for him, Greg Roman, uh, to move in some different directions. Uh, there were records that he set here that are going to be here for a really long time. Now, we leave that era, and we'll enter the next era of our offense. And then he did say that Lamar Jackson, they will get input from him on their next offensive coordinator. And that's big. That, 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 that is really big, if true. Um, because if, if you truly do get input from your quarterback on your next offensive, I mean, I, I think this should have been the case years ago. Years ago. Certainly after 2020. Not before, but after 2020. Ravens should have been like, hey, Lamar, what you want to do? If they really like thought the way that they say they feel about Lamar, they should have done this in 2020. Now, and a lot of the stuff that the Ravens have done, especially recently, they should have done a long time ago. A lot of us, that we sat at the end of the bar and we saw this stuff, but apparently Ravens didn't. But hey, we're here now, so it is what it is. We don't need to be stuck uh, on the past. But um, a really good question here. Is there concern with the business side with, with everything going on with Lamar Jackson with attracting a new offensive coordinator? And that was such a great question. Such a great question. But Harv said, no way. He said, everybody is going to want to want this job. Uh, he said, it won't just uh, be me. But yeah, he, uh, I, 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 I love it. I love the question because you got to think about that. Like offensive coordinator, that could be like, man, if I take the job, is Lamar going to be there beyond this year? Or that same offensive coordinator could be like, if I take the job, is Lamar even going to be there this upcoming season? Because that question is still real. Yeah, this presser gave you not a lot of nice feels. Like, hey, yeah, these guys said Lamar is going to be here for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. <sighs> Actions, baby. Actions. So, anyway. Um, now, do you plan on changing your approach uh, at the wide receiver position uh, They said yes certainly We had some injuries with Bateman and Dude, Which they did uh, We'll look at free agency in the draft We hear the fans We hear you guys with the questions One of our key missions last year Was to build the O-line back We feel like we're very close To building a championship team And I believe that was Eric DaCosta That said that So um, then the next question was uh, If you tag Lamar Are you willing to entertain trade offers For Lamar Another great question. So basically saying, hey, if y'all end up tagging him, are, are you going to listen to trade offers? Eric Acosta said, that's not something we're going to talk about. Our focus is a sign of Lamar. You did not shut it down. He did not shut it down. I, I see a lot of people leaving that part out because so many Ravens fans, they, they, they feeling good and all that, which, hey, feel good. I ain't got no problem with that. But don't forget about some other stuff that was said. And because he, he could have been like, no. We ain't, we ain't entertaining none of that stuff. But he, he didn't shut it down at all. And I thought that was very interesting. But anyway, moving on. Uh, he said, you currently have five draft picks. Are you going to try to accumulate more? And Eric DeCosta said, we'd love to have more. When you uh, have too many picks, it's hard for all those guys to make the team. <laughs> and then he talked about when Ozzy had like four picks. He said it was one of the Ravens' best drafts. Now, Eric DeCosta with five picks, I, I think that's – that. I, I don't see that happening at all. Like, there, there's no way. Eric DaCosta, a Ravens GM, going into a draft with only five. Pff, please, yeah. You know he's getting more somehow, some way. Hopefully it don't come one way that I'm thinking of, but he's going to get more picks. Um, now, speculation toward the end of the year. Uh, oh, there was the speculation toward the end of the year with Lamar being hurt and not coming to the games. Now, is there any need to repair the relationship between Lamar Jackson and the players uh, and the front office, too. Uh, and EDC said, our relationship with Lamar is fantastic. When it comes to negotiations, it's a challenge, but that doesn't affect our feelings for Lamar or the organization's feelings for Lamar. Now, get this. He said, we just have to keep those two feelings separate. So feelings for Lamar as a player versus feelings for Lamar as an agent. So on the business side. He said, so they got to keep the personal and the business feelings separate. 
you're dealing with the same person. You're dealing with the same person. So that's almost impossible to keep the personal feelings out of it because they're going to creep their way into them negotiations. It's going to happen. But how will you let it affect those negotiations? We'll see. Uh, he said, we'll put our heads together and negotiate a contract. This thing has been a burden for both of us. Um, next question. Somebody asks, how much has Lamar expressed his desire for a fully guaranteed contract? Another good question, because we've heard all these rumors. We heard this, that and the third from this person, that person and that person. We've heard it all. But Eric DeCasa, I really liked his answer on this because it's true. Because <laughs> you walking on eggshells, buddy. Uh, he said, I told you guys last year that I won't talk about the negotiations. That has to be kept private. That would be counter productive and it would you know how private Lamar and his camp is you know how private the Ravens usually are too he talked about how the NFL PA they like leaked out little little parts and different like offers and stuff little parts of the, the contract offer and whatnot but he said he ain't saying none of that he ain't saying none of that stuff because you certainly don't want to break the big trust that Lamar may have for you right now um next question was did did Greg approach you about the whole leaving him stepping down and Harbaugh said over the past three days they talked uh said we've been talking about everything and the conversations just ended up working their way into that place where both sides felt it was best and again like we talked about in the Greg Roman video uh where we talked about him uh stepping down uh that's what Ravens do Ravens when it comes to coaches uh nine times out of ten they will give you a beautiful exit out they they will even they will sign a recommendation letter and all that you could put them down uh, as a reference they got you they really do uh now another question i think this was from jeff Zrebik, but anyway he said are you going to interview internal and external candidates and has the philosophy changed over the years Hobbs said we'll interview internal and externally uh the identity of the offense is what's important and we've established that that's a good identity that was concerning for me, but again, actions speak louder than words. I call this the liar's brunch. Not the liar's luncheon, but the liar's brunch. So hopefully, Harbaugh may be doing a little bait and, and, a bait and switch. But hey, we're going to have the same identity we had, but uh, nope, gotcha. We're really changing stuff up in a better way. But anyway, he said... um. We've established that that's a good identity and we're going to carry that for the schemes, players and plays that you run out and put out there. Something I'll be looking at. Uh, and he said that's uh, methodology. Nothing is set in stone. Nothing ever stays the same. You got to keep it moving, but it'll definitely be in the identity. So Harbaugh, Harbaugh said that you got to keep it moving. Ravens have not kept it moving over these past couple of years. They haven't. They've kept it afloat, but they have not kept it moving. And it's crazy because I was really thinking, um, Especially after last year, especially with the passing game, the way that it was going, I really thought like, all right, last year showed you like, hey, these Ravens, they could really pass the ball. I mean, two years ago, excuse me, two years ago. But then Lamar got hurt. Uh, and I was thinking, all right, well, going into the season, Ravens really going to be throwing that thing around. And they were a little bit, but they just, the consistency with it just, yeah. Anyway, um, somebody asks, what if Lamar holds out? If he's placed on the franchise tag and doesn't show up right before the season, especially with you having a new offensive coordinator. And that was also another great question. Uh, and <laughs> Hobbs said it's not a guarantee that it'll play out that way. OK, cool. hey, that, that, that's true. You're right. That's true. Um, if the tag is applied, how will you move in free agency? And Eric DeCosta said, any deal that we do with Lamar will affect the cap, but we have a better salary cap than most teams. It's not going to be a situation where the market is open, where we're signing guys left and right. Now that part, like that part, I, uh, I would believe that the Ravens really ain't never been a team to go here, there and everywhere when it comes to free agents. Um, so that should continue that that's Ravens identity right there. Um, Lamar and Roquan's situations uh, are different, but both of them didn't have an agent. Will having gotten the deal done with Roquan help you guys with Lamar? ADC said Lamar has his own style of negotiations, and Roquan does too. As you guys have written about, so he, he acknowledged the, like, the, the bloggers and stuff. I mean, you could acknowledge the people that make the videos too, EDC, but that's okay. It's, it is what it is. But he said, as you guys have written about, it does allow us to use the franchise tag to keep both if we want to. I'm happy we got Roquan's deal done, and I'll be even happier when we get Lamar's done. Again, that uh, 
positive reinforcements behind them wanting to get Lamar Jackson's deal done. Again, gr sounds great. Sounds great, but action. It's about that action. Uh, J.K. Dobbins. Somebody asked about J.K. Dobbins' open frustration with the offense uh, and asked if Harbaugh has spoken to him and what his thoughts were on that. And Harbaugh said, we talked Monday morning, and he made it clear to me what he meant. So he said everything was cool and crystal clear. Uh, then uh, somebody asked about the potential retirements. I think that was Rita who asked. Yeah, that was Rita. She asked about the potential retirements from Calais Campbell and Justin Houston. Uh, EDC said he met with both of them and will keep those conversations private. I have a lot of respect for both of those guys and have a tremendous amount of respect uh, for their game and the way that they play. He said those are guys that you want on your team. Uh, so, I don't know. Sounded like a little exit, <laughs> exit speech to them. Like, hey, thanks for everything. Uh, but, hey, we'll see. We'll see. We won't know till you know. Last year, Calais flirted with retirement. Then he ended up coming back. This year, we'll see what happens. Uh, and I think Justin Houston, maybe this uh, Anyway. Um, he was asked about, they were asked about Marcus Peters uh, and the, really their corners in general and how they're feeling about both. And Edgar Costa said he got a crazy res amount of respect for Marcus Peters. Um, he, he called out his agent by name. Uh, he said at some point Marcus and I will probably speak, but as far as corners, we feel like we can never have enough corners. And he talked about um, some of the different cornerbacks on the roster. And again, that, that's been an interesting conversation over the years because Ravens have said that for a long time. But what are, when, when they say you can never have enough corners, what are corners' job to do? Their job is normally to cover receivers. He says you can never have enough corners. But the way that they move at receiver is like, it's like they, they contradict each other. You, you can never have enough corners. We always need corners. We always need quality corners. But the corners' job is to cover the receivers, but you don't feel the same way on the opposite side of the ball. So, again, we'll see how this – off season goes with how they address a lot of this stuff um now this next question is something that i have not been thinking about we talked about it a lot early on this year but i had not been thinking about it and it had just completely slipped my mind somebody asked about patrick queen's fifth year option i was like oh man i completely forgot this is when they would have to pick it up or not uh, and Eric DaCosta said We were excited how Patrick Queen played this year He made a jump He became the player that we envisioned him to be I'm not prepared to make that announcement at this point Does it make it difficult to sign him long term? If he's playing at a high level We'll make it work He's a good player I think we've got the best two inside linebackers The combo, the tandem uh, In football So the best inside linebacker tandem in football We'll see We'll see I remember Last year when he was asked about Hollywood's fifth year option And then he, he actually answered in a presser He said yeah we, an, we anticipate Picking up Hollywood's fifth year option But I, I, I continued to say Alright Eric DaCosta said it But we need to see it We never saw it And we never saw Hollywood play for the Ravens again Anyway um, He was also asked about The exclusive slat or non-exclusive tag uh, Like have you made a decision uh, if it gets to that point on which tag you're going to apply exclusive tag Lamar can negotiate with other teams non-exclusive tag he can negotiate with other teams and if he comes to a deal that the Ravens don't match then those other teams whoever signed Lamar would have to give the Ravens two first round picks. Uh, EDC said we don't have to make that decision for six weeks uh, We're going to be going down to Florida I love to be able to go down to Florida And not talk about Lamar because we will have the deal done But we do have a plan in place if it gets to that uh, I mean pretty self straightforward there um, And Harbaugh was asked about any Are there any other changes with the offense or defensive staff And Harbaugh's just Hey guys get opportunities and things happen So we'll see how things go So there'll probably be changes I mean that changes really every year With the Ravens staff So I wouldn't expect this year to be any different I mean they already Greg Roman is gone So there could be some changes there uh, We'll see what happens with James Urban uh, We'll see what happens T. Martin I mean I'm, yeah, T. Martin, Keith Williams. Um, who's the offensive line coach? Uh, okay, I'm, I, I ain't trying to go down the list of names. I'm forgetting coaches' names now. But anyway, um, speaking of coaches' names, Mike McDonald. They were asked about Mike McDonald. And uh, Harv said, I've known him for several years, and I thought he's been great since he first got here. You saw his defense evolve over the year, and all the coaches on defense definitely did a great job. Now, um, somebody asked, this is another good question. He said, is there any concern that it could be a trend? With Lamar Jackson's injuries Because of course the last two seasons He's missed the end of the seasons uh, Harbaugh said I don't anticipate it being a trend I don't believe Lamar is going to have those issues going forward 
because uh, he works so hard. Now, like I said before, with Eric DaCosta and them, they're going to use that in negotiations, man. You, you, you know they are. And, I mean, it's business. Why wouldn't they? That's ammo for them. Like, that's ammo in Ravens' back pocket. Hey, Lamar, look, look what happened at the end of last season. Look what happened at the end of the season before last, this past season. Look what happened. Hey, what's going on there? Oh, you know what? Let's let's take off a couple mil there. So that they they gonna use it for sure. Um, now here goes one of the parts where a lot of Ravens fans are. Like, oh yeah, they're gonna do it finally. Well, let's see. Uh, Hobbs was talking about different positions on the team and the offense and whatnot, and he said the one area that needs to be built is the wide receiver room. We'll be adding a lot of pieces to that room. Seventy five percent of our offense is intact. 25% of it will be new, and that 25% is all in the same room. Speaking of the wide receiver room, uh, those are pieces we can give Lamar and help him thrive. I love what you said. I hear what you said. I agree with what you said, but are you going to deliver on what you said? My only question, my only question with that, well, really with everything, are you going to deliver? Again, it sounds great. Sounds amazing. Cause I seen Ravens fan put oh how about Sally Bata really improved the wide receiver room. Let's go. And I love it. But we've heard stuff like this before. We've heard it. About that action, man. So um now, where does the confidence come from that the deal could happen in the next six weeks? Lamar Jackson deal, of course. Uh EDC said if you go into negotiation with a negative feeling, then chances of getting a deal done are not good. It's small. Uh, and he said, we've done a lot of contracts. And I think he said they've done the second most contract extensions. He either said second most or fourth most over the past couple of years. Uh, but anyway, the top four at minimum uh, when it comes to contract extensions by a franchise over the past couple of years. And he said, I truly believe Lamar wants to finish uh, his career in Baltimore. So, hey, hey, we're going to see. Uh, will you be able to hold on to some of Greg Roman's run concepts with a new offensive coordinator? I uh, said, I like to keep a lot of those schemes around. And John Harbaugh said the passing schemes as well, because Greg Roman had a lot of good passing schemes. That's what John Harbaugh said. Um, now, he was asked, somebody asked, I, I love this question, too. I, I, when I heard this question, I wanted to give the reporter a big hug. I, I, don't, I forgot which one it was, but I love this question. Somebody asked EDC, when you're building a football team, uh, do you build them for playoff success as opposed to just regular season success? And I, I said, wow, I love it. I love it. And EDC said, we build a team first to win a division. Uh, we hope to win as much as we can and get as far as we can. Some of my disappointments are things that are out of our control. He talked about like injuries and stuff, and there may be a play where they just didn't make it or something like that. Oh, okay. I said, this team is close. We could have won a lot more or lost a lot more games. We have the potential to build something that's sustainable for a very long time. Okay. Do you anticipate Chuck Clark being on the team next year? Uh, EDC said we haven't made any decision on that. Chuck is an outstanding safety. He's a great team player, and he continued to uh, talk about, he's like, hey, what well, Chuck, Chuck's been starting for, like, what, the past, like, three, four years? Huh? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. I don't think Chuck's going to be here next year. Hey, but, hey, I didn't think he was going to be here last year, and boom, he, he was there. So what do I know? Um, if you were still playing, would there be, uh, like, if the Ravens, somebody asked if the Ravens were still playing, like if they were still in the playoffs, uh, would there be uh, a possibility that Lamar Jackson could have been back? And Harp said, yeah, it was possible. He was working hard to get back, win the division, to win the playoffs. Oh, yeah, he, he talked about how Lamar was making it. He was trying to come back, but then he went back to the previous question about how they build their team. Do they build it to, to win in the regular season or build it for the playoffs? Then Harps had went back to that question. And he's like, we build it to win in the division, win in the playoffs. We want to be at our best. We'll be our best at the end in December and January. And he said that we, we always talk about that a lot. Uh, I really believe that we were. We had the injury to Lamar. That was the biggest challenge we had to face. You know, I mean, yeah, that's that that would be for any team, any usually most franchises, that would be their biggest challenge if their starting quarterback uh goes out with injury. Like, if their starting quarterback is good and he goes out with injury, that would be a lot of teams' biggest challenge. So we get it. Um and he said we played well in that game, the playoff game against the Bengals. He said the game plan was working exceptionally well and the play went the other way. So 
obviously talking about the fumble play. And yeah, they they were playing well, especially given the situation, given them circumstances and whatnot. They were playing well. Um, but anyway, he said, "Is there a key to the, in the interview process that gives you an idea if the coach will fit in with the team?" And Harb said, "The type of person that Bashadi will be looking for. That's what they look for." Uh, he said, we'll want someone that can fit in and stand out and go far. So it sounded like he was talking about somebody that can come into the Ravens and then they can go get opportunities elsewhere. And Ravens do uh, put a lot of people on. They do uh, allow people to get opportunities and whatnot. Um, so anyway, next question was uh, somebody asked if it was because Lamar didn't have a long-term deal. Did that play a part in why he didn't come back and play? Uh, and EDC said, Lamar can speak to that. I always love when they say that. But he said Lamar can speak to that, but my feeling is no. And his unique style as a player and as a quarterback, and he's a freak type of athlete on the field, uh, having a serious type of injury makes it difficult. Now, I spent a lot of time over the last two years in the training room, and he was trying to get back, and other guys were too. And, yeah, we certainly know. He ain't lying about that. Everybody was in that training room over the past two years. Um, then they a follow-up question to that. Uh, somebody asked if they were satisfied where they were at with injuries. Uh, especially after saying that they were going to take an extensive look at it last year. Uh, and Harv said, yeah, uh, we did really good with injuries this year. Uh, as those guys got back, we didn't add to any of the injuries uh, with new ones. Um, and then uh, still on the subject of injuries, somebody else asked, are, are there any uh, kind of off-season surgeries that anybody's having, like any cleanup surgeries, anything like that? And EDC said, we only have one player who's going to have an off-season surgery, and that's a record for us. And when he said that, I was thinking, hmm, if it's not Lamar, um, I could see it being somebody like maybe Ronnie Stanley. I know he's had quite a bit, even though I know he was just talking about the other day that he was going into this offseason healthy for the first time in some years. So maybe it's not Ronnie Stanley, but um, hmm, who could it be? Who was injured that came back but still kind of injured? I don't know, man. I don't know, so I, I I guess we'll hear about it afterwards. Um, then they were asked about what kind of impact uh, a Jabo can give. Do they think a Jabo can give? EDC said that he's excited about Dave came off the Achilles injury. Could have played earlier, but we didn't want to rush him because he said they had a lot of depth uh, at that position. He said he's a long, tall, tall guy, tremendous potential, and he's ha having a great offseason is critical for him, especially uh, how last year was. Now, they were asked, do you expect Bateman to have to play with screws in his foot? Shout out to Hollywood. Uh, he said they can, they can come out, but they don't have to, and it just depends on what's best for him. That was Harbaugh answering that. Now, um, somebody asked, what do you hope the identity of the offense looks like? And Harbaugh said a winning offense. You have to do everything well in situational football. <laughs> uh, you have to have a complimentary passing game, a drop-back passing game, a standalone passing game, a well-rounded, balanced offense. Uh, we're going to run the ball. We have a QB that can do everything. We have to get that wide receiver room where we want it. Okay, alright, we're gonna see, man. Uh, will you be able to afford that type of wide receiver, like a number one wide receiver, uh, with paying Roquan and possibly paying Lamar Jackson? And this is obviously a question for Mister DeCosta. Uh, he said, "I know what the fans would like. So, hey, they they be hearing us. They be they be hearing us. They don't necessarily listen. Well, when they do listen, it's usually a little bit too late. But they be hearing us." I, I mean, we all been knew that, but they made it clear throughout this presser, and they will another time, too, bring that up. He said, I know what the fans would like. Uh, we'll have to get creative on what we can do. We'll have to make some tough calls on players. Uh, what we don't want is to mortgage two or three years from now by paying a bunch of guys this year. Our goal is to always have a window open to compete every year. You can't pay Everyone can't have eight or nine players at the top with high salaries. And we've seen teams like that this year. I really thought right there. I thought he was going to call out the Rams. I, I was just waiting to say, oh, he like the Rams. But he ain't do that because that, that would have been a little little blow. And then that could have taken away a team that possibly made it might have made a deal with you on something or whatnot. But yeah, anyway, I said depth is one of the most important things to have. It's great to have all those star players, but you have to have young ascending players ready and that's true, but you want a healthy blend of both. Uh, they will, Somebody else asked him about the status of the O-line and really specifically the status of Ben Powers. Uh, EDC said, Ben has probably improved the most on our team. He's a guy that we love to keep. They said he played probably like every snap this year. Uh, he said, my feeling is that he'll be sought after in free agency. So basically it's saying, bye, Ben. 
that's basically what he's saying. Like, hey, you getting ready to make a nice amount of money, uh, and you're gonna make more money elsewhere than you would here. So enjoy yourself, go do your thing. So shout out to Ben Powers too, man. Um then uh somebody asked in oh Oh, this was Jamison Hensley. He said, in eight months, when you start the season, is Lamar going to be your starting quarterback? And I was like, what? Like, I mean, I, I appreciate the straightforwardness, but it's like. But anyway, EDC said, I don't see any reason why he won't be Jamison. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, and then the last question, uh, somebody asked, how frustrating has it been dealing with all the outside noise? Um, and EDC said I'm not on social media Except for I got an Instagram to track my daughters uh, But he, he said but he hears about things He said sometimes Chad will tell him some stuff um, And then he said It's almost like a cocoon in this building We try to drown all that stuff out It's not a distraction for me But I can't speak for John I said I right now Eric Whoa, Okay all right, And it's like look it's tr- we, we know like we're Ravens We're players We're coaches they let the outside noise creep in. We've seen it over the years, man. That's old news. Um, but anyway, Eric also said, I try to build the team. Uh, I try to build the best team we can. Me and John talk all the time. We're neighbors. And he has slipped that little neighbors thing in there real quick. And he said some other stuff. But that was it. That was it. Um, so, yeah, uh, the uh, pressers, they, they're interesting as always, especially this presser, end of the season presser. Um, so yeah, I, I I I was cool with it. Uh, they did address pretty much they they addressed everything we wanted them to address, uh, and some stuff that I had forgot about too, uh, like the the PQ with his uh the fifth year option, the wide receiver room. They talked about injuries and whatnot. So yeah, they they addressed a lot of the stuff. But again, now it's about the action. How are they gonna follow up? Everything that they said How are they going to deliver On all these these promises What's going to happen next So it's like alright cool So you, you talked a good game That's great But now again Like I've been saying this entire video It's about action now So let's hope for the best See how it goes And we'll roll with it I appreciate y'all team Keep it clean Shout out for those of y'all That watched this entire thing I know it went a long time But that presser It went even longer But I love y'all I appreciate y'all support Man I really really do man Love you Hope you're having a great day Hope you have a great Well I'm recording this on Thursday But you'll probably be watching this on Friday So yeah Have a good one We out